Hey everyone, hope you guys are well. Um, just was here, had some quiet time, and was doing a little Bible study, reading, doing some things around the house, and um, I just thought it would be good to share, to get this out there, um, you know, with my friends and some of my subscribers. Um, some of the things that I, I've been reading about and just Bible study is always good because, you know, it brings us back to one, the quiet time. When you think of study, you think of quiet time, you're, you know, you're able to just focus and get what you need to get from your study. And, um, you know, being a mom of seven, I don't have much quiet time. So a lot of times I feel like I have scramble brain because you get into this place where you're always thinking about what I got to do next, what I got to do next. Um, am I forgetting something? Am I missing something? And I have a book that's really, really good um, that I found about two years ago in my home. And this is it's called Come Away With Me, My Beloved. And it's, it's, it's like it's a book of... It's just basically the Holy Spirit ministering to you and God talking to you on a personal level, which is always important, you know, that you have a personal relationship with God outside of any and everything in life, that you have that personal relationship with God because, you know, God knows you best and you always want to have the relationship. You know, when you're in a relationship with somebody, it's like you're closest to the people who know you best and God knows you best. And like that, I found like, just that quiet time, like even if I take like 15 or 10 minutes, that book really helps me because I'm able to just let it saturate, like the word saturate, because it is scripture based and everything like that. But it's God speaking to you on a personal level. So anyway, like I just had a lot of things on my mind and, um, you know, just in my spirit and like. I, I like to be able to hear God, God's voice personally because, you know, he always says, my sheep know my voice and the voice of a stranger, I, you know, they will not follow. And so you have to spend time. You have to spend time with God. You know, you have to make time because this world and this life will try to suck everything out of you. So if you don't make time, you have to make time with God. That's what people have to understand. Don't wait for a time spot to open up for you because by the time you finish doing everything you've done in your day, you are tired. You understand what I'm saying? And so your flesh is like, I don't feel like getting up. I don't feel like reading. I don't feel like meditating. I don't feel like doing nothing but just sleeping. But then when it's time to go to work, you set in that alarm clock and you up and you going. When when I have clients, I'm up and I'm doing it. So I have to make time. When my kids need us to do something, we make the time to go do it. So the most important thing is to spend time with God, to make time with God, to hear him. You need to know his direction because in this world, there's going to be so many voices coming to you, trying to tell you to go this way, that, and the third. And then here's God with the still small voice waiting for you to come to him. And as soon as you come to him, you'd be surprised how quick you get the answer. A lot of times in the world, we're searching out things. We're on the internet and we're searching out this and we're certain searching out that. And you go to, you go, you Google this and one person, has their opinion and you google this and another site has their opinion and then that's where you get mixed up because you have the many voices speaking to you and here here is god who knows you best he already knows what's in your spirit he already knows what's going on with you so he's right there waiting to give you the answer waiting to help you in your situation and here you have spent hours and hours and times on the internet trying to find out what's wrong with you trying to find out what this one says trying to find this solution when god is the author he is the beginning and the end of every situation so that's major key to spend time with god make time with god on your way to work on your way home, on your way to pick up the kids, whatever you may do, you can talk to God, you have your phones, you can download different uh, sermons, you can download different things pertaining to what you might be going through, and God can definitely speak to you, and he can use that to speak into your spirit. But I just wanted to like share, I just felt it was important to share um, what I have studied during Bible study, and um, it, it's about it's about wealth. wealth. And lately... OK, everybody wants to make more money. Let's just be honest. You know, it's like that's what makes the world go round. You want to be able to do things. People get tired of working, 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 working. 
paying bills, spending money, and not being able to do exactly what they want to do. And a lot of the times, the reason why we end up in a position of chasing mammon, because money it is mammon. It, it fades away. These things are materialistic. Mammon represents the things that fade away, okay? Now, the reason why we end up in a position of chasing it, because we always have a desire to want more. It seems like the flesh, first of all, the flesh, you can never, ever flee, uh, please the flesh. Never. The flesh is something that you can never, ever please. You know, and if th this might help you, so take notes because I'm going to take notes as the Holy Spirit downloads, downloads stuff into my spirit because I am, this, this is something where iron sharpens iron. We are to help each other. When God gives us things, it's not always just for us. When he leads you to share, now he might speak to some, the Holy Spirit might see, speak some things to you personally to help you in your personal situation, but you will discern and you will know when there are things that you can share with others because we are a body, you know, the body of believers. And so we are should be able to help each other. You might be the leg, I might be the foot. They might be the arm, this person might be the hand. At the end of the day, once God is the head, what he uses us to speak, the other parts of the body will be able to understand and to coincide with each other. So I might be able to say something that might help you and then somebody might be able to water that seed. It's all about getting the seed watered that's placed inside of you, um, the, the seed of the word. So what I wanted to talk about was wealth. Um, you know... Godliness. God was speaking to me about how godly godliness is not a means of um, financial gain. Um, and that's in First Timothy chapter six. If you go into First Timothy chapter six, you will see where um, you know a lot of times people people associate godliness and having God with you know, using God to help you with financial gain. And I admit, I must admit, I've done that. You know, I've went to God and, you know, a lot of times because we've been in situations and different things like that and you just need bills paid off. You know, you, you, you're seeking God for a thing instead of seeking God for who he is. Um, God has always promised to provide for us. And most of us, if we look around... We have what we need and then some. How many outfits can you wear a day? How many pair of shoes can you wear at one time? Um, even if you have a box of juice in your fridge, you have something. If you can turn on the faucet and get water out of it, you have something. A lot of times, um, you know, it's not always, we don't always have what we want per se. But God has always promised us that he will provide us all our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now, people will go deep into it and they'll say, well, why is there poverty and why is there this and why is there that? A lot of that has to do with sin. Sin is a major key of why a lot of people don't have what they need. And faith, faith. There's generational curses. There's so many things intertwined with that. But those of you listening, if you can look back over your life and see how no matter what your situation is, God has always made a way. That's that's something that we have to understand. God has always made a way. Now, what we do along the line with the money that we're blessed with, with the time that we're blessed with, because time is major. Time is a major seed sown. How are you sowing your time? Um, yes, we all get 24 hours in a day, but it's like, what do we choose to do with those 24 hours? Because once we spend time with God and you have time to do other things, you, you, you're getting your faith in action. You understand what I'm saying? Because a lot of times people look at money as the, as the answer to everything. And, and it's not. And a lot of times chasing mammon and the things of the world, chasing them, puts us in a position, you know, poverty, poverty, when we, when we speak in poverty, we speak of lack, right? We speak of lack, but are you 
do you have a poverty relationship with God? Like, is there a lacking in the relationship that you have with God? Is you starving your relationship with God? Because I'm telling you, what I have realized in my life is that when I've put God first in everything, it's like everything else is already taken care of. Because my focus is the same way for when Peter was walking on the water. There were so many other things going on in his mind, so many things that he was thinking about, you know, and stuff like that. And that's how our life is. It's like it's always something that we have to, that that we were thinking about that we need to do or a bill we need to pay or we need to take care of this and it's like it's 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 like it's set up to be a distraction. This world is set up to be a distraction. Everything is set up to distract us from God. Even our children, sometimes even our marriages, just life in general is like it's set up to pull us away from what matters. And what people fail to realize is you spend all this time chasing mammon. You spend all this time chasing things. And when we leave this world, we can't take nothing with us. We can't take nothing with us. So it's like, what does that say about us? Now, when we look at 1 Timothy 6, verse... Um... I believe it's eight. I don't. I don't. I don't know. Oh no no no. Uh, First Timothy chapter six, verse six, seven, and eight. But godliness with contentment is great great gain. Um, what is godliness? Godliness, um, is you know be being rich in your deeds. Being generous, generous and willing to share and just being that mirror and looking like God. Like, it doesn't mean being perfect because, listen, God has promised to perfect that which concerns us. None of us are perfect. That's the issue where people fail to realize. We we, we um, move from glory to glory and from faith to faith. But, um, you know, w- what I'm trying to share is what God has given me because we're in a season now where people are going to be blessed abundantly because God is not a man that he should lie. And you have those people that have been faithful. You have just people that have been faithful. I don't have to go down the line. Just know that there are people who have been faithful and we live in a time and God knows the time that we're living in and how hard it is to be faithful and to have standards and have morals and try to do what's right. And God is not a man that he should lie. You know, there's, there's always seed time and harvest time. And 2008, it's something about 2008 that just says this harvest time. And what people fail to realize is that because the time is short, there's a lot of things that got to go down. There's a lot of things that have to happen because God is not on a time schedule, but he's on time. That's what people fail to realize. He's on time with everything that he does. He's on time. You see what I'm saying? Even though he doesn't have a time schedule, when he moves, everything he moves and he's, it's, listen, already done, already done situation. So, you know, I look at it and, um, you know, God, you know, we, we, we're talking about for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And, you know. Hope in God provides us with everything for our enjoyment. And back to it being seed time and harvest time, you know, a lot of times we can pray to be rich, but your soul has to be watched over because money, the love of it is the root of all kinds of evil. So I look at myself and I say, God, you know, you just get tired, especially being a mom of seven and having a husband. You know, there's things you want to do and experience because you're laboring constantly. This is a new generation, a new breed, and we have all different age groups in our family um, dynamic with our children, all seven of our children, from adults to, uh, well, my son, he's 19. He'll be an adult when he's 20. You know, they consider him an adult now, but teenagers, they're still babies as I'm concerned. They're still young. They need guidance. I need guidance and I'm 37. So at the end of the day, I have from age 19 all the way down to six. And so 
with that said, the family dynamic, it's like, it's so much that you have to do. You have to be on point. You know, you're dealing with all different personalities and it's, it's tiring, but I'm going to tell you, I will complain and complain because it's just me and my husband and we don't have help. You don't, you can't say, well, I want this one to, to can, can you watch my children for me so I can go here? Can you do the, it? No, it's just me and my husband tag teaming. So it gets tired. It gets draining. And I would complain and I'd be hurt and I'd be crying. I'd say, God, if I could just, you know, do this and I could just do that. And then, you know, the Holy Spirit let me know that seed time and harvest time. And when that harvest comes, when God blesses and he does what he does, he's not going to let nobody else get the glory for it. That's for one. Okay. For two, we have to think if we have everything we need and we want at the time and God doesn't give us a little struggle, make that flesh struggle a little bit, then we wouldn't be walking in the faith that we're walking in now to be able to stand and what God has given us on top of that. You got to understand that God knows, honey, that temptation is out there. You be tempted to go here and do this and you want to go here and be here all the time. And then your focus is not on God. You ain't making no time for him. Every minute you having fun, you got all this money. Your flesh is still void, which means that you still want, want, want and go to buy, buy, buy and get, get, get and take, take, take and not care about other people. And your heart becomes like stone because you don't understand you need a personal relationship with God. You know, hope and wealth is so uncertain. We can have it all, but it's uncertain, just like this life. So, you know, it's so much when it comes down to money. And that was the Bible study today for me. It was wealth and money and having and how we have to pay attention. Because when God blesses us, we can't forget him. That's, that's just the moral of the story. When God blesses us, we cannot forget him because then we become, we make, a, we start to worship that golden calf. You understand what I'm saying? We start to idolize the things that we have because we're looking at the business that God blessed us with or we're looking at the idea that God blessed us with. And then we take our eyes off of the God who blessed us with it and make the blessing the God. No, God blesses. Praise God, not the blessing. You understand? Praise God. Now, and we have to remember that because, listen, God is a jealous God. You don't want him to have to flip it and push you into the rough situation to ruffle them feathers to make to make you. Because I've been in situations. I still end up in this situation sometimes where I get sidetracked and God got to come on back. And I appreciate that because as a parent, as daddy to us, that's what he does because we do it to our children. We got to bring them on back in. Oh, hold up. You doing this, this going on, that going on. Come on, reel it back in. And we do that because we love them. Because if we didn't love them, then we'd be like, oh, they'd be all right. And just go our separate way and keep doing what we're doing. doing. But we don't allow the things of the world to distract us from kingdom business. That's what's so important. We don't allow the things of this world to distract us from kingdom business. Because I'm always going to be one to say kingdom is family first. You got to, God has blessed you with this. This represents him. This family represents God. So what we have to do is we have to focus on what is important. And it's hard because we get distracted. If we allow the things of the world and different people and things who don't understand the responsibility God has given us, it will take away from the actual call that is on our life. But um, I'm going to cut this short. I uh, just wanted to share that with you guys, you know, and when you get a chance, just spend time, just make time because God will speak to you directly. And it's, it's, it's awesome. It's a great feeling just to know that you can hear his voice. All right, everybody have a blessed day.